All right, so now we're starting with the cardiovascular system. And I want to warn you now, we're going to learn all the features of the heart. I diagram the path of blood flow through the heart up in lecture. Um, but I want you to work through this section quickly because when we get to the vasculature, that's much more difficult. And the, the list of terms is a lot longer. So be sure and start with that list of structures to know and look at the difference in how many they are. Are and, and adjust your time accordingly so that you're not caught off guard. Uh, we, the structures of the heart are very important. We do focus on those a lot, but learning the vasculature for the arteries and the veins um, is, is quite comprehensive, so you need to be sure and adjust your time for that. All right, so here are the structures to know for the heart. Uh, we've gone over some of these in um, lecture, and we're going to look at them again here in lab briefly. All right, so the apex of the heart. Uh, apex is generally what we call the top or the tip, and even though the heart is facing downward, we consider the bottom uh, part of this the top. <laughs> so this is the apex, and up here is the base. I'm not sure why base isn't on the list, but I think you can probably remember that's the base. So I think we can skip testing on that one, all right? And so the apex is the inferior portion of the heart where it comes to a point. Next, we have the right atrium and auricle, and I kind of put these together because if I point an arrow, you could be uh, answering either one of these. And so the upper chamber, the chamber is the atrium. And remember, it's patients right and left. So I really recommend that you actually physically write right and left down when you are looking at something and you need to say if it is right or left. All right. And most of the time when we're talking about vasculature, you're going to need to say right or left, especially when we're looking at the chambers of the heart. If you don't say it with chambers of the heart, then you're for sure going to get it wrong. Okay, you may get partial credit if I'm feeling really nice, but most likely you won't. All right, so uh, right, right, and left down because it's just so easy to instinctively want to choose your right. And if you write it down there, you'll see it as a visual cue to make sure you remember to do what you know how to do. And we don't want to lose points for things we know how to do. All right, so the upper chamber, top left hand, uh, or I'm sorry, patient's right hand portion there uh, is the uh, right atrium. This receives blood from the inferior and superior vena cava. Uh, and we, so from the superior there, inferior is coming up from here, and this is going to go through this way. Um, and so this lumpy, muscly material here is what we call the auricle. And that has almost more of a fatty-like look to it in some hearts. Uh, maybe we'll see one here in a minute. Um, and so the auricle is the rough interior portion of the atrium so it's kind of the the tissue portion and so I will ask you is it the chamber or is it the tissue okay I will phrase it something like that I'll make sure you know which I want And so hopefully you've been going through the 60 second heart and learning how to draw this out in 60 seconds because it's really beneficial to be able to do that and then add the labels and the blood flow of the heart. And so if you have done that, you should know it's always A over B. And so we have the patient's right and the patient's left. So we have the right atrium and the left atrium. We have the right ventricle, which forms a V shape, which is kind of handy, and the left ventricle. So those should not be things that you miss, okay? And this is a holding place for blood all right but don't miss these this should be really easy for you to get if you miss these you are not studying so here is the left atrium you cannot see the oracle in either of these pictures but if I ask you for the tissue cover portion covering this that would be oracle blood is going to enter the upper chamber coming from the right and left uh, pulmonary veins. So you can see these two pulmonary veins here, and there's going to be some more. They're kind of on the back side of the heart here, and the blood is going to flow in through there. A little harder to tell on the dissected heart. You really have to almost be able to take and put your uh, hands on it and put a utensil through to kind of see where it goes. It's really helpful to be able to do that. So the lower chambers are the Ventricles, correct. And is this going to be right or left? If you said left, that's correct. All right. So this is the left ventricle. Uh, it's the chamber, of course, of the heart. It's a holding place for your blood.
So we have three tissue layers here, uh, and it can take a little bit to kind of grasp the distinction here uh, just from pictures, but we have the pericardium. Remember, peri means above, so it is the outer layer of tissue surrounding the heart. And then we have the myocardium. Myo means muscle, so it's the actual muscle tissue. And then lastly, we have the endocardium, endo meaning inside, and this is an endothelial tissue uh, lining um, covering the inside. And so if you can remember those three layers, pericardium, myocardium, endocardium, I can promise you those will show up on the exam and they will probably be on the lecture, uh, a question on the lecture exam somehow as well. All right, so learn what those root words mean. Myo meaning muscle. All right, cardium obviously referring to the heart. That was another great picture at the beginning of that PowerPoint. Anyway, all right, so here we go. Pericardium, this can also be called the epicardium. I really like this picture here on the left because they're actually pulling, I wish I could take credit for this one, but I can't. They're actually pulling out the tissue where you can see it's just that thin outer covering on the heart, all right? Much harder to show on the model. So I just kind of have to point to the outside and say, what is this layer of tissue? And I will put it that way. I'm not going to point to that and say, what is this? All right, I will say, what is this tissue or what is this um, space? Something like that. Uh, some things definitely just say, what is this structure? But uh, sometimes you have to dis differentiate so that you know what I'm asking you for. All right, here's the myocardium. It is the middle layer, myo meaning muscle. Again, very hard to show on the uh, model, okay? So it's just kind of showing you and saying, hey, this is where the myocardium would be. Much better to see it over here on the actual heart. You can see that is the muscle, muscle tissue. All right, so the tissue facing the inside is going to be the endocardium. It's the innermost layer of the heart, and it's made of epithelial tissue. So it is a different type of tissue than the muscle tissue, right? And so you can see it over here on the model, um, and we're just going to kind of point to it. Um, and so myocardium, muscle, endo, inside, epi, above. So I told you in the nervous system we'd see some more trunks. Well, here's the first one. Remember, it is going to be the base of something before it branches off. And so this is the pulmonary trunk, all right? And are they really red and blue? No, but that really helps us to know when things are oxygenated or deoxygenated. So when you practice drawing and labeling this, use the red and blue colors. It really, really, really helps, okay? Pulmonary trunk. Um, Remember, an artery carries deoxygenated blood, and this is as it's leaving the heart. All right, it's going to go through the valve into the pulmonary trunk and run out through the pulmonary arteries. Now, there are that is an exception there. So we have two exceptions: that's pulmonary arteries and pulmonary veins. This is deoxygenated blood. But it's not called a vein, it's called an artery here, okay? So just be aware this is kind of an exception to the rule. And then the uh, pulmonary veins, um, those are carrying oxygenated blood. So I'm not sure how those two got kind of flip-flopped, but just be aware that they are, all right? So don't let that confuse you. So blood is going into the right lung from the pulmonary arteries. It's going to go onto the right lung because what does it need? If it's deoxygenated, let's pick a darker color blue. So we're going to have the blood is going to come in through here into this lower chamber and it's going to come on up out here and go to the lungs all right go on all the way out to the lungs so we're going to enter from the inferior and superior vena cava into the left atrium we're going to pass through the valve and we haven't learned the valve name so I stuck that in there yet to the right ventricle and then it's going to come on out through the pulmonary artery PA Okay, so remember that's artery. And we have a left pulmonary, or actually pulmonary trunk, then the pulmonary artery. So whenever it divides, all right, so how do you know the difference there? Where does pulmonary artery start and where does pulmonary trunk uh, end? All right, so basically trunk is going to be before the division. Then as it divides, that's when it gets the new name, okay? 
All right, so here's the other exception, the pulmonary veins. Uh, blood is returning to the heart from the lungs back through the pulmonary veins, and so this is oxygenated, oxygenated. And this is going to go into the left atrium, all right, to the left atrium, which is kind of hard to see here. Uh, but it's going to go from the pulmonary veins to right here to the left atrium, and it's going to go down through the valve into the, and if you can imagine the rest of the heart there, the left ventricle. All right, so the left pulmonary veins is going from the left lung to the left atrium. And remember, even though it says vein, this is oxygenated blood. The right pulmonary vein, the blood is returning to the heart from the lungs going to the left atrium. And again, it is oxygenated. Learning these base drawings, like this one right here on the right, is really very important. Uh, and I will try to give you the links to learning these arteries from the upper half of the body to the lower half of the body, because I will often draw these out in class so that you can look at them as you are going through a dissection. Because if you can draw these out, then it really just helps you to be able to visualize what is what, okay? Now, this picture is similar to the one that I use, but it's not exactly, uh, but I will give you those links um, and I highly recommend practicing them. Um, there is just something about drawing something out and color coding it and it helps you to understand it and learn it so much better. So here we're looking at the aorta and we do have three parts to the aorta uh, and so if I asked you what is this vessel, um, depending on where it's pointing to, um, you could say the aorta, the ascending aorta, the aortic arch, or the descending aorta. Okay, and you can see that it has the subclavian, common carotid, uh, coming off of these as well, brachiocephalic trunk, and then it branches on out from the coronary arteries. I actually kind of wish I had just drawn something that I messed it up, and I kind of wish I had just left it and corrected it uh, in the video, because you're going to do this, and this is why I want you to really draw out and practice that 60-second heart draw the arrows with your red and blue pencils uh, and label the parts, okay? So we're looking at the ascending aorta. So this is where it's going up and is carrying oxygenated blood. It's going through the left ventricle through the aortic valve to arrive here. And it's the largest artery. So I'm going to show you what I did because this is what I'll say a lot of students do. Uh, and I caught myself, uh, but I'm going through here because first off, I don't have right and left written down, which I told you is always important to do. But that's not going there, right? This is going through here, so through the pulmonary artery. So you have to be really careful in how you draw these out and make sure you know which is connecting to where. So if we're going in through, we're going to write, we have our right and our left, right? So the blood is going to, is oxygenated, so it's coming, coming in through pulmonary veins, into the atrium, into the ventricles, and back up through the little hidden um, a valve that we can't see in this picture and then going up through here okay so be careful when you're drawing these out and know who is going into where because <laughs> it gets confusing if you aren't careful uh, and I like these models here where you can really kind of see what it would look like in the human body um, as far as just the whole schematic view. Um, I also really like these larger hands-on models here too because it's just easy to kind of get your hands on and see how things are really connected. Uh, don't have the great benefit of that when it's merely online, solely online, but you can go into APR and they have added a section where you can actually rotate things around and really look at them. So explore and look for that section. I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head. It's brand new, but it's down at the very bottom. And you can actually go and you can 360 turn things around and look at them. All right. Really important to do that, to look at things from all different perspectives. So the arch here above the ascending aorta is the aortic arch, and it carries oxygenated blood. So then the portion that is going down, and we'll go down, down on into the thoracic cavity, is going to be the descending aorta. And it actually does descend on down into the thoracic cavity where it becomes the thoracic aorta, and then we can, uh, then it becomes the abdominal aorta. All right, so remember, it's all about location, location, location. All right, and so this is, of course, delivering oxygenated blood on out through the body, uh, up through the subclavian veins and all. Um, up here, 
and then when it's from the descending, so the ascending is going to help deliver up here and on up to the head, and the descending is going to go down and deliver onto the rest of the body. All right, so here we're looking at the superior vena cava. So superior means the one above, and you can see that it is port here, um, and you can see it here as well. So this portion here is the superior vena cava before it splits. It's the superior vena cava, and this is bringing deoxygenated blood to the heart from the upper portion of the body. All right, the inferior vena cava is going to bring deoxygenated blood from the lower portion of the body, and then they are both going to enter into the uh, right atrium here. Unfortunately, these models don't do justice to the inferior vena cava. It's really short and stumpy and kind of hard to see, but you can see a little bit of it here looking at the back. So again, this is carrying deoxygenated blood from the lower body into the atrium. So the coronary sinus is actually um, a collection of veins that come together uh, to form a large vessel that collects the blood from the heart muscle. And we'll look at, at uh, some of these in a little more detail in a different uh, PowerPoint, uh, I believe. I think it's in a different one. This feature is one of my favorites. I just like the names of these and they really describe what they are and that's chordae tendinae or tendinous cords. These are string-like structures that connect the valve to the heart muscle. Um, and so you can see them here. They're kind of plastic looking and in this diagram, but this is a wonderful picture of some chordae tendinae there. All right, so these thicker areas of muscle that are kind of lumpy looking almost, these are areas of the heart where the chordae tendinae are attached, okay? And so it's this bumpy looking area here. These are the papillary muscles, and so they're kind of like papilla. They're, they're raised features. So finally, we're getting to those valves, and we have lots of valves, and they unfortunately seem to have several different names. We have the pulmonary or pulmonic valve or pulmonary semilunar valve, the tricuspid, the mitral or bicuspid, and so you do need to be familiar with these different names uh, and different ways of describing these, all right, uh, because you will hear them in, in, in those different ways in different uh, textbooks or different teachers, different aspects. First, we're going to look at the tricuspid valve, and one way to remember this is going from left to right is try before you buy. You always want to try something before you buy it, right? So the try comes before the buy, so the try is on the left, okay? So the tricuspid valve, this is an atrioventricular valve or AV valve, okay? And so you may hear it uh, referred to as the right atrioventricular valve. Um, and so but blood passes through this valve from the right atrium through the AV valve to the right ventricle, so atrioventricular. So if you have trouble remembering tricuspid, you, if you understand that atrio is atrium, ventricular is ventricle, uh, and you can remember to say right, then you can still get the name of the valve. Okay, but you do really need to know it as tricuspid. That's really the most common uh, way it's referred to. And here on the right is an actual human tricuspid valve. And you can kind of see the little in, inner leaflets or cusp there. And so this has three cusp as opposed to the bicuspid, which has two. And if you'll pay attention in the 30 second or 60 second, oh, you probably think in 30 second, no way. Uh, when I draw out the cusp, I do them kind of like that. I do one, two, and three. Okay, and then I do one and two, sort of. That's not the best way to look at it, but, but I do try to, to model that in the drawing to help remember. Try before you buy, okay? Uh, but the purpose of valves is also to prevent backward flow. So blood is going to go through, it's going to control that flow and not allow it to go back through or do what we call regurgitation. This thing's really on a roll. I just keep seeing my pictures as we go through when it stops and freeze frames me at the beginning of the video. Anyway, so sorry if you don't find that humorous. It's funny to me. Anyway, I hope you do. It keeps it a little more entertaining as you watch the videos. Maybe you're not falling asleep on me. All right, so pulmonary semilunar valve. This is also sometimes called the pulmon pulmonic valve. Okay, uh, so this is a semi 
lunar valve. And it says lunar because they're saying uh, moon shaped. They think it's moon shaped. I don't really see a moon shape, but they call it moon shaped. So blood leaves the heart and goes to the lungs through this valve. So we're going to want to enter blood. All right. Coming from the superior and inferior, inferior vena cava here, we're going to go through the tricuspid valve. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to name. This is going to be the right atrium then through the tricuspid valve into the left atrium and then we're going to go through the pulmonary valve pulmonary semilunar semilunar you can say pulmonary valve i will count that to the pulmonary did you say artery or, artery or vein i hope you said artery even though it's blue okay and so again we've got that blood there to control and regulate and prevent backward flow Next, this little guy has three names. Uh, most commonly, it is called the bicuspid or mitral valve, and you've probably heard like mitral valve prolapse, uh, but it is an atrioventricular valve, so this would be the left atrioventricular valve, so blood is going to pass from the left atrium, I made sure I was on the correct side, I'm thinking there, left atrium, and go through the atrioventricular valve, which is the bicuspid or mitral valve. And again, this is a human heart here on the right. Uh, this is from a comparative anatomy website called the Visible Heart Lab. And it actually compares human valves with particular animal valves. And why would we even care? Well, because what do we do when we need a replacement? We've got to find something similar. And sometimes we can find something that works well and similar enough from another species. So the last one is the aortic semilunar valve, and I'm going to tell you, drawing these out really helps me remember the names, uh, because if I'm drawing this out, I can just look and see that it's going to the aorta, and then I know the name of the valve. And the same thing with the pulmonary semilunar valve. If I know the name of the vessel, I know the name of the valve, or vice versa, because I can track it. I can visually see it. All right, so drawing that out really, really helps. It is really kind of hard to see this valve here in this picture because it's kind of up inside, but it's in there, I promise. Um, and so that's the aortic semilunar valve. And then um, We've got blood leaving the heart to go on to the body through this valve, all right, and it separates the left ventricle from the aorta. So it's a little harder to draw here in this picture, but we're going to enter through the pulmonary veins into the left atrium, and then we're going to go through the bicuspid or mitral valve, mitral valve um, or the left atrioventricular valve into the left ventricle, and then go through the aortic semilunar valve on up into the aorta. All right. Lastly here, and I know this is a little bit longer one, but I didn't want to break up this components of the heart. I wanted to kind of keep these together. So if you needed to pause this, hey, it's okay. You get to pause me when you're at home watching this. Um, so the cardiac conduction system, it's a specialized group of cardiac muscle cells in the walls of the heart that send electrical signals to the heart, causing it to contract and squeeze and to push that blood on through. So these are very important. All right, so we're going to look at the components here. We have the SA node, which is the sinoatrial node, which is near the sinus uh, and the atrium. So we call it the sinoatrial node. Uh, and on the model, it's kind of represented by that number 32, real creative, uh, but it's going to be kind of here in this portion. Um, and so it's located in the right atrium. And this is what we call the pacemaker of the heart. And we'll get into more detail in this in lecture, but this is our pacemaker, right? All right, so here next we have the atrioventricular, typical name here, between lies, almost between the atrium and the ventricle. Uh, it's in the inferior section, technically, of the right atrium. Remember, this is our gatekeeper. He slows the, the, the pace just a hair so that we have just a slight delay so that we squeeze in a rhythm that allows the blood to continuously go blood go through. If we squeeze exactly simultaneously, our blood's not going anywhere, right? Think about squeezing a balloon. At the same time, you're going to get a big ball in the middle, but if you go squeeze, squeeze, it's going to pass on through, right? 
Next here is the bundle of hiss, and unfortunately this is just not on the heart model, so I would dry, draw out just the electrical portion of this. I think there's a really good picture of that in lecture, and just kind of know where the bundle of hiss is. It's kind of hard to show some of these fibers. All right, so we can see the bundle branches. They separate out into the right and left bundle branches here, okay? And so this is the main portion of this white line, bundle branches, all right? And so you're going to have one of those on each side of the ventricles. And lastly here, we have the Purkinje fibers. And so these are going to be the little bitty tiny fibers here. Hmm, that's not the best color. Little bitty tiny fibers here extending off of the bundle branches.